Hello everybody, uh, I'd like to start by saying thank you very much for taking the time to watch and listen to this presentation which is aimed of course at parents and carers to support the process of your year nine students who are about to embark on making their curriculum choices for the years 2024 to 2026 which of course will take them from where they currently are in year nine to the start of that exciting journey at year 10 all the way through to the end of year 11. My name is Charlie Jacks. I'm one of the assistant head teachers here at Coombe Dean with oversight of the Year 9 options process. And later in the presentation, you'll hear from my colleague, Mr. Stuart Kohler Lewis, who is the deputy head teacher with oversight of curriculum. Over the next few slides, I'll talk to you about the process that we're going to go through, the curriculum at Coombe Dean School, how to research and find out information about the decisions and choices that your young people will be making and how to then go about making those choices and what's next in terms of the process itself. So I'd like to begin by sharing with you the overview timeline of the Year 9 Curriculum Choices process, which has of course been shared with you already by a letter in the previous week. Obviously right now we're at the top of this process on the week commencing Monday the 11th of March, where this presentation and some other information throughout the course of the week is being released to support the curriculum choices process. As you get to the third line down there, Thursday the 14th of March, the parents evening is an opportunity for parents and ideally students as well to meet virtually with teachers of the key stage three curriculum, which will help to inform decisions because conversations will of course be centered around current progress in the subject, potential, and indeed material which is being taught currently and how well that's being learned and remembered. Down to the next line there, the fourth line down, Friday the 15th of March, the curriculum choices selection form itself along with individual subject information in the form of recorded videos much like this one which will cover each individual subject will be released and I'll talk more about both of those aspects later on and show you exactly where to find all of that material. As you move further down the list there, you can see Friday the 15th to Friday the 22nd, there is an opportunity for individual information, advice and guidance, where we'll be building uh, a bank of frequently asked questions directed on our website. Uh, we'd also encourage parents and carers to be in touch if they do have any questions, queries, any concerns via a dedicated email, which I will share with you at the end of this presentation. As you move down there, the third line from the bottom, Wednesday the 27th of March, really important date. This is the deadline for submission of the Curriculum Choices form. I really want to stress though at this stage, and I'll say this a couple of times through the presentation and really emphasise this with the students, it is not a first come first served process. Whilst absolutely we need those forms submitted by Wednesday the 27th, we really don't need you to rush home when the form becomes available on the 15th of March uh, and complete the form and send it in straight away. We want to give students and parents carers time to think, time to discuss before submitting the form by Wednesday the 27th of March. Once that has happened, we can begin the complex work of cross-referencing the choices that students have made with our school logistics, with teaching availability and class availability and so on and so forth. And then, as you can see at the bottom of the table there, uh, individual conversations can be held. Individual conversations with students who may not be able to, for whatever reason, um, have the exact combination of subjects that they have chosen. And then by term six, we'll be in a position to confirm allocations for year 10 and year 11. So I'd like to begin by talking about the Coombe Dean School curriculum. Curriculum in its broadest sense can be described as the lived daily experience of any young person, uh, encompassing interactions both inside and outside of school. In our school context though, the curriculum is the learning and experiences that we plan and provide for our young people. And we want to deliver a curriculum of course that excites young people, which provides them with interesting, useful and of course powerful knowledge. And information which ultimately may help them to see the world in new ways. Ultimately what we want is this to enable young people to see 
and to move beyond the sometimes limiting confines of their own experiences. And we firmly believe here at Coombe Dean that children do need powerful knowledge as this helps them to understand and interpret the world and ultimately in the future to go on and make the world a better place. We believe that all our children have a right to this knowledge and this is fundamentally central to the curriculum that we offer and deliver at Coombe Dean. And you are able to access more information about all of the aspects of our curriculum via the school website, including details of the topics studied and assessments made within each subject, not only at Key Stage 3, but also, of course, at Key Stage 4, the part of the school curriculum that we are talking about mostly in this presentation. And all of this information, along with the curriculum learning journeys, where you can see how learning in each subject develops from year seven right through to the end of the school journey can be found on the curriculum section of our school website. You can either access that through our school website or simply by uh, going to a search engine and typing in Coombe Dean School Curriculum. Now, of course, that all sets the scene for the school curriculum and students have been studying the Coombe Dean School Curriculum for nearly three years now. But as they reach the end of year nine, they, of course, reach a threshold. And what they're faced with now is an opportunity to specialise, to make choices about the curriculum and the subjects that they study, which will sit alongside their core curriculum. And all of this, of course, points towards qualifications, which students will be receiving at the end of year 11. All of this adds up to around nine in total, level two or GCSE equivalent qualifications. I'm going to talk through that in a little bit more detail now. To start with, the core curriculum comprises of GCSEs in the following. Maths, English language and English literature. Science and what we call combined science, which is a standard offer. Combined science being worth two GCSEs. I'm going to take a, a pause here to talk briefly about combined science and separate science because there is a difference. Combined science is part of the core curriculum, the standard offer, as you can see on the screen there. Separate science involves using one of the options available to students to select to increase the amount of time that they spend studying science. And that would lead to gaining three GCSEs as opposed to two. And those three GCSEs in the separate science route would be in the individual disciplines of biology, chemistry and physics, as opposed to, as I said before, the core offer of combined science, which leads to two GCSEs. Now, I'd really like to stress the importance here of viewing the science subject presentation if this is something you are interested in understanding more about. It would be worth everybody having a look at this so you have an understanding of the difference. Mr McDermott, our head of science, takes you through this in more detail um, and will hopefully help you to understand this a little bit more. The key message though as with any selection that you make should be do I like this subject? Do I enjoy it and therefore do I think I'll be successful in studying it? And so with separate science by choosing that additional option of studying a little bit more science you will be studying 14 hours a fortnight of science as opposed to nine with the standard combined science option. So it's essentially a choice to study more science. Now, moving away from science and getting back into what was flashing up on the screen there in the box, which is about our core curriculum. Further to this, we have uh, personal development, or PD, and physical education, PE. And though these subjects are not award bearing, i.e. you don't gain a qualification from the study, they are important aspects of students' wider development and do form a part of this core compulsory curriculum. All of our students will study these things, in other words. The choices which are being made now then, this options process, if you like, are going to make up around 40% of the remaining time during students' school week. And students are able to express a preference for four subjects. These subjects are GCSE or equivalent level subjects and the information provided by each subject will talk you as parents and carers and students through what is learned as part of the qualification and how the subjects are assessed. 
The images on the screen there will hopefully help you to have an understanding of this. And you can see on the right hand side there the chart which shows you roughly uh, in proportions how much curriculum time is spent on those core elements and on these options subjects, which is what this process is all about. Now, one of the most common questions that we get asked as school leaders, as teachers, and probably you as parents and carers is, how on earth can I, at the age of 13 or 14, decide what to do? And so what I would encourage students to think about here is, really, what do I enjoy? What is it that I want to study more of? The reason that's so important is, of course, by selecting an option for GCSE, you're committing yourself to five hours of study per fortnight plus homework. So if you've chosen something that you don't enjoy, then that step up in, in the level of work that you're going to be doing is going to become a little bit more challenging. I would encourage students to think about what are those things they're ex are excited to explore further, those topics, those subjects that they want to know more about. Some students also are at a stage where they can think about the future in terms of what they might like to be when they're older, what sort of courses they might like to access for A-level or further, or what they might like to do for a job. And so their students need to start to think about what are their strengths, where do they see themselves in the future, and are the choices that they're being made influenced by that. There's a couple of things I would really, really encourage parents to talk to students about, and that is not making any decisions based on things like what your friends are doing or what teacher you think you might have for the subject. This process is an important moment for children as individuals to make their own decisions with the guidance of course of their parents, carers and teachers. There's a couple of reasons why choosing a subject based on what your friends are doing is a very bad idea. First and foremost, there is no guarantee that you will be in a class with your friends. Um, for many subjects, there are more than one class. And even if you think you're hedging your bets and you're going to choose a subject that your friend is choosing, well, it may not be that you both end up in the same group or you both end up being successful in having that option choice given to you. The other thing I would warn against is choosing a subject based on your current teacher or a teacher that you think you might have for GCSE because teaching allocations change. Teachers sometimes move on to other schools and get different jobs or for certain years are not teaching certain elements of the subject. By the same merit, I would also encourage you to think about the subject for uh, first instead of the teacher in the sense of if you have a teacher that you haven't got on so well with in year nine, or year eight but you really think you do love the subject well actually you may find that a you don't have that teacher for your GCSE level study or actually that that teacher is very different when they get to the year 10 or year 11 level when they're teaching students that have chosen their subject you may find that your relationship with that teacher differs quite a lot the overall thing that I'm driving at here though is that students should be making their own choices based on what they enjoy and if you're not too sure about what you'd like to do in the future, then the best advice we can give is that you keep your mind open to a broad and balanced curriculum that keeps as many doors open to you as possible by selecting a range of subjects with a range of skills. I'm going to hand over now to Mr. Cola Lewis, who's a senior deputy head teacher for curriculum at Coombe Dean. And he's going to talk to you a little bit about the research that students and parents and carers can do to help be informed or informed as possible at this stage. He'll also talk about the EBAC, the English Baccalaureate, and GCSE grading. Over to you then, Mr. Cola Lewis. Now, students will have had opportunities as part of their curriculum. They may well have done so independently as well to have engaged in some research around career opportunities and choices they might want to make for further study. The Career Pilot website provides information about subjects, which you can see top left hand corner of the screen here. It also offers advice uh, on the right hand side, age 14, choices at 14 plus, which is where we are at this particular stage. And there's some useful advice and information and guidance which can be accessed there. And in terms of the different qualifications that are available, that is also something which can be accessed through Career Pilot. So the Career Pilot website for students that perhaps want a bit more information beyond which has been provided by us as a school, we want to look at the different options that are available later on through their schooling in order to inform the decisions they make now. A very 
welcome and in fact it is recommended that they will have a look through the career pilot website and as parents we'd welcome you supporting the children with that too and researching even further into the future the ucas.com website gives information about degree opportunities for example and it may well be worth looking at this stage if there is um, information that's found out a bit about a particular career path that might require a degree it is useful to research the opportunities that are available there at this stage that can be done through the ucas.com website and the national career service is also available in terms of finding information about salaries working hours uh, the focus of different careers and jobs and so on and that can all form part of the process that informs the choices that are made at this particular stage now when the students submit their form which is the way in which they're going to register the choices that they wish to make and the preferences which they have in terms of subjects for their key stage four curriculum one of the early questions on the form asks whether the students intend following what we call an eBAC pathway or a standard pathway the standard pathway obviously is distinguished from the eBAC pathway and the fact that it isn't made up of all of the eBAC subjects so I'm going to talk now briefly about what the eBAC subjects are and there is much more information in the curriculum choices booklet in the eBAC section which comes before the information about all of the subjects uh, which you can uh, have a look through to help support the decision that's made we do recommend the study of the modern language alongside uh, and as part of a broad and balanced curriculum and in order to follow the eBAC pathway what's required is alongside the core of English and maths and science history or geography should be studied alongside a modern foreign language so in our case in our school it would be either German French or Spanish based upon what's been studied at Key Stage 3. And the government has expressed an, an ambition previously that increasing numbers of students across the country follow this pathway because of the opportunities that it leaves open for students once they've finished Key Stage 4 and done their GCSEs. The information I'm providing here then relates to assessment and the way that the qualifications are assessed uh, by the time that the students reach the end of the course. And perhaps the uh, more familiar grading structure of A star to G um, and the equivalences which we now have in the new nine to one courses can be seen on the screens. So you can draw some broad comparisons with something you might be more familiar with than the new grading structure. It's also worth mentioning that for some courses which are referred to rather than GCSE courses, but level two courses do still have an equivalence to the nine to one GCSE scale, which I've also included on the slide here. So for example, uh, a student studying, let's say for the sake of argument, uh, a GCSE in German will receive a grade at the end of the course on the nine to one scale. Four is considered what we call a standard pass and five is considered a strong pass. And they're both broadly equivalent to the old grade C. If a student studies enterprise and marketing, as an example, then the grade that they will receive at the end of that course will be on the scale which you can see just below the awarding section on the graphic on the left hand side. So for example, uh, the equivalent of a grade four will be a level two pass. So it's a pass at level two is the equivalent to a GCSE grade four. And so the highest that can be achieved in that particular case is the level two distinction star, which is worth just below a grade nine, indeed between a grade eight and a grade nine on the nine to one scale. The differences ultimately come down to the way that the courses are assessed. There is less terminal assessment um, than there is in the nine to one GCSE courses. Thank you very much, Mr. Kola Lewis. I want to talk now about what we are providing for you as parents and carers as students to help with this very important process. Now, as you can see on the screen here, if you head to our school website, you'll find menus across the top there in white. And the one that you want to click on is Student Life. When that drop down menu is created, you're looking for Year 9 Curriculum Choices. And I'm just going to take you through now on the next few slides the materials which will appear in this section of the website so you know what you're looking for. So, when you find that section of the school website, there are three all important documents relating to the process that I am talking about. 
The first of these is the Year 9 Curriculum Choices booklet. Now, the one on the screen that you can see there is indeed, as you can see from the dates from last year. But by the time you get to the website following this presentation, you will find the up-to-date version of this booklet for students studying their courses from 2024 to 2026. And this takes you through the details of the subjects as part of our core curriculum and those all important options subjects. So whilst you have access to the subject presentations, which I'll talk about in a second, you've also got this document that you can refer to for specific information about what is studied, how the courses are assessed. You'll also find in this section of the website information about the Coombe Dean learning journeys, that sort of stuff about the curriculum that I talked about earlier. And very, very important form you will find here is the Curriculum Choices Key Guidance to Completing the MS Form. Now, that is the advice and guidance that takes you through how to complete the Microsoft Form, which you use to select the options you would like to study. Further down on this section of the website, as you scroll, you will find buttons that look like the ones on the screen and clicking on each of those will take you to a short video presentation, a bit like this one, which will talk you through the subject, will talk you through the topics and the content covered and how those qualifications are assessed. And those presentations have been created by the subject leaders for each individual subject. And then at the bottom of the form, you have the options form itself or a link to that Microsoft form. I would really, really encourage you, like I said before, to click on the science uh, video to make sure that you have a full understanding of the difference between the combined science route and indeed the separate science, or as some people call it, triple science route, which is explained here by Mr. McDermott, the head of science. Just to remind you again, that link there to the options form that you'll complete to select the options, the choices that you would like to make as and when you feel that you are ready. But of course, before the deadline on Wednesday, the 27th of March. So what next? Well, you probably have some idea of what comes next. And hopefully that involves doing a little bit more research. I really want to encourage students and parents and carers to look at the, the finer detail of the things that are studied and the way that courses are assessed. And you can do that through looking at the subject presentations or by reading the Year 9 Curriculum Choices booklet that you can find on that section of the website that I mentioned earlier. The reason this is so crucial is because the things that are studied at GCSE level may well be quite different to the things that you've studied, for example, in Year 7, 8 and Year 9. And it might be that in a certain topic, you have a look at the finer detail of what's studied in year 10, 11 and think, yeah, that's a little bit more up my alley. Or you might think, oh, well, I've really loved the year eight and nine course for this particular subject. But actually, I've got to look closely at the detail of the year 10 and 11 study and see if there are things in there that are of interest to me. Because, of course, if you're making an option, you're committing to studying this course for five hours of fortnight plus homework. So it really does need to be topics and things and skills that you think you're going to enjoy and therefore be successful with. And I really want to give this message to all students. I said earlier you should choose things that you enjoy. That's absolutely right. It's our job as a school to support you, whether you feel that you are clever enough or you have the academic ability. Actually, really, you should choose the things that you enjoy and it's our job to support you, whatever your ability level or whatever you perceive your ability level to be. There is some really important guidance for parents, carers and students to read, perhaps even read a couple of times. And that's about how to fill in that form, because there are some rules to follow. It would be unfair to say it's a completely free choice, because there are certain things you need to do within the choices you make to fit with the way that our school works. So your core curriculum is not a choice. As I said earlier, students will be studying English. They'll be studying maths. They'll be studying at least combined science. Uh, as well as life education or personal development, as it's called nowadays, and physical education. But there's also rules within the way that you complete the option form. As you can see on the screen there, if you've got good eyesight, on the right hand box, you can see you need to select one of history or geography. Now, you could select both. And I need to be really clear about that. If you love history, you love geography, you want to study both. Great. There's a way of doing that within the form. 
but you are going to need to choose at least one of history or geography. Also, I would encourage you to look at the bigger picture, look at that curriculum journey, the information you can find on the school website that I mentioned earlier. And of course, there are links and, and advice and guidance around the careers things that Mr. Coda Lewis mentioned before, as well as GCSE grading information and of course further information on the EBAC or English Baccalaureate. Okay, so to start to draw this presentation to a close, I just want to quickly make reference to this form that I've referenced a few times, the form where you complete your curriculum choices, your options, if you like. And this will be sent by class charts as a link to parents and carers after 3 p.m. on Friday the 15th of March. Now, as I've mentioned before, there is guidance around how to complete this form and the various rules that exist within the completion. And students will be talked through this form and, and those various nuances to the way in which they need to complete the form in an assembly on Thursday the 14th of March. So by the time the form is sent out to people, students will have a better understanding of the things that they can and cannot do as part of the curriculum choice form process. The form itself needs to be submitted by the end of Wednesday the 27th of March. Now, subjects, as I've said before, are not allocated on a first come, first serve basis. So there is no need to rush home from school as students on the 15th of March and complete the form there and then. There is time to think and to consider. But please do observe the deadline of Wednesday, the 27th of March for completion of that form. Now, that brings us to the end of the year nine curriculum choices. 2024 to 2026 parents and carers presentation hopefully you have an understanding of the process thank you so much for taking the time to support uh, your children in the school in making their curriculum choices um, I'd like to finish with just a reminder that we have a dedicated email address for any queries or questions relating to this process and that is 2024 year 9 choices at coomdean .co.uk. You will be best to send any queries or questions or requests for advice around the options process to this email address. It will save you time rather than sending questions to different members of staff, for example, the tutors or the year team leaders. Uh, this web uh, address, this email address will be monitored closely by the staff involved in the process, including myself, and we'll aim to respond to you within 48 hours where possible. Thank you so much again for your time. Uh, we really hope that the curriculum choices process and all the conversations you have around those at home uh, is enjoyable for you. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you soon and to seeing what our students have chosen to take forward for their level two study. Thank you very much.